Hello and welcome to Oscoli. Join us today as we make our gluten-free mushroom and thyme chicken with some cooked veggies on the side. Um, I've it's the first time I've made this recipe in a really long time, so it was kind of an experiment, but it worked out. As always, please like and subscribe and feel free to go to our website, oscoe.com. O S C O E Y dot com to look at some of the grocery hauls that we did in our April spending wrap up. Thank you and have a great day. All right, welcome to Oscoe. Today I'm going to make this um, chicken dish that I used to make when my oldest daughter was really little, like she was probably two to five. I haven't made it in a really long, whoops, in a really long time. So I'm using these chicken tenderloins that I bought at Costco. Um, I think I bought them last week. They were in the freezer and I pulled them out. I think I bought them two weeks ago. But one of the things I'm doing this month for May is to um, do a low to no spend month. So I'm, today I'm kind of using up a couple things that are in my cupboards um, that I just kind of needed to use up. Let me turn on my burner. Actually, not yet. Um, so I just finished up my last grocery haul from April, um, from the 30th. I was having some problems uploading stuff to YouTube, so I didn't get it. I'm trying to get it up today, and I'll probably post this tomorrow. Today is Monday, May 2nd. Um, so I make this chicken with this gluten-free cream of mushroom soup. I apologize. My children are being super loud on the stairs. So I apologize if you can hear them yelling. Um, so this recipe is gluten-free and it is nut-free, but it is not dairy-free because this clearly, I mean, it contains tons of milk and then I'm also going to be using this A2 milk. Um, we do need to use this up. We're out of the 1% from the schools and this is stuff that we buy from Costco. It doesn't expire till May 11th, but um, I know that if we don't use it up in the next, like before Friday, we will not use it up in time to, for it to still be good. So making this sauce with the cream of mushroom and the thyme for the chicken, it's really good over um, rice or pasta, but my son doesn't like pasta, so we're gonna do rice. And then I'm also gonna stir fry or cook. I don't know, it's not really, it's not real stir fry, but I'm gonna cook these vegetables. It's some of the cabbage, I still have a little bit of cabbage left in the fridge. I didn't grab all of it, but some of the cabbage, the green cabbage that I bought at, I think this is one from Winco earlier this month, it's still fine. The mini bell peppers I cut up, and then some of the big bell peppers that I bought at Winco, I also cut up, there was half a yellow one in there that I'm gonna use. And then these onions that I um, I bought, I bought these at Costco, but this, I think we opened this for sushi night or something, so I'm just gonna use some of these. Um, I guess you're not really a cook unless you have a bag of onions in your fridge, but we do. I'm making rice. I don't know. Can you see the rice cooker? Yeah, I'm making rice in my rice cooker. Um, and then I'm also, because we need to use milk up this week, I'm going to use this cheesecake with the milk. <laughs> it's sugar-free jello pudding, but it is going to have whole milk in it, so it's probably not the best for you. But I also have some strawberries. Let me grab those out of the fridge if I can without stepping on the dog. Um, so the strawberries that we bought at Costco on Friday, I guess today's Monday, I think we went on Friday. They're starting to get, you know, strawberries only last a few days in the fridge. So I'm going to do these with the pudding for dessert. My son won't eat the strawberry part, but my daughter will. And then hopefully they'll be eaten up by tomorrow so they don't go bad, um, which is my goal. We also have some raspberries that need to be eaten as well. So the first thing I was going to do, whoop, all right, so I'm going to cut this up and I'm just going to dry it a little bit. And then you want to make sure you really keep the chicken juice off your counters and wash your hands really well. And then I usually wipe the counters down afterwards. I have one of those, these pumping, um, whoop, pumping clean. These are kitchen safe um, cleaner or food safe cleaner that I usually use for this. So I just cut it up. I'm gonna turn on my pan. Let's see. This one I want the large burner. I'm gonna put it like kind of on 
we have numbers so like I do like around five which I guess is probably medium um, and then I also wash my shears afterwards because I I am not a fan of chicken juice let me tell you I don't know if you've ever had salmonella but it's I've had it and it's not great so this chicken was in the freezer the use by date is like Thursday or something like that but it's because I I cooked some and then I froze the rest and after I cooked some Luna got up on the counter while we were tucking in the kids I don't know if you saw my tweet on Twitter but she got up on the counter while we were tucking in the kids and she most definitely ate the entire package of chicken besides the two pieces that I had eaten um, so I had to I pulled this back out of the freezer the next day so it was definitely thawed it was okay I gotta stick this in the garbage can I'll be right back okay we're back so I just dumped the package in the garbage and I washed my hands really well with um, soap and then I'm also going to use the tongs to kind of get this a little dry and then once I s am no longer touching the chicken I'll wash my hands again because I do not want to catch anything from it. I am pretty paranoid. <laughs> Probably have some sort of germophobia about chicken, raw chicken specifically. Um, I have had salmonella. We caught it from a restaurant maybe 10 years ago even. So I don't want it again. All right. So my chicken is just kind of drying a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to put let me see. All right, so I have two pans. This one I'm going to do my chicken in. It's got a wide flat bottom, and then that one I will do my um, my vegetables in. Um, I would, ideally I would have two of these wide flat bottom ones, um, but I only have one, and I don't want to mix them because I don't want the sauce to get on my vegetables. So I'm sure people will be horrified by how I cut my onions. I'm going to cut them into the pan directly, see if you can see. So I think there's supposed to be onions in the, um, in the chicken pan as well, but my daughter doesn't really like onions as much. She eats almost everything, but not onions. So I'm probably not going to cut my onions in there. I'm just gonna do my chicken -y thing. All right, so I'm just gonna do that many. Um, let's see how this goes. Just gonna cook them a little bit before I add the rest of my stuff. Some of this, like the peppers and stuff, will cook pretty quickly, so they will be done before the chicken. I'm thinking. But it's okay because we have 20 minutes left on our clock with the rice. So, see, this is starting to get a little warm. So, basically, I just put them in the pan. I, you're supposed to um, cut off bits, but I do not do that. I'm kind of like, like a lazy chef, I guess you would call it. I don't know. I don't have time for all that stuff. Um, I did put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of both of these pans. So the chicken is going to cook pretty quickly the first time you stick it in there. Okay, so I got about half of it in this pan. And I'm going to put my, whoop, see, I'm going to have to wipe down my canvas really well after this. I'm going to put my salt and pepper on it. Sometimes I do paprika, but with this, um, with my, uh, with the sauce, I'm not gonna do paprika on my chicken, but if I was just cooking it plain and then not um, not adding the sauce, like sometimes we'll just cook chicken, just have chicken in the fridge. All right, so it sticks a little bit to the pan. I didn't put as much um, olive oil on there as I always do, and I'm just behind turning it. But it's okay, because that will add to the sauce and make the juices of the sauce a lot better. So the first couple of turns, I just kind of 
make sure it's good. Actually, I'm gonna see if I can fit more chicken in here. I'm gonna do the whole pan like this. Just sort of pop it in there. Usually I have these burners switched. So we'll see how this goes. And just kind of like brown it. Okay. So this paper, I'm just gonna stick right in the garbage can that I have out. And then I'm gonna stick this pan this plate in the dishwasher, but first I gotta add salt and pepper to these ones. So it looks like they did fit in there. Um, they fit in there, okay. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. This it's too much chicken in that pan. Now my things are burning, my onions. Let's see, this maybe end up being a disaster just because I'm distracted by filming. Let's turn this pan down a little bit. Four. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to my vegetables and basically just cook them a little bit. And then, let's see, I didn't grab a bowl. I'm going to have to grab a bowl to put them in. Let's see how it ends up working out with timing. Alright, and then a little bit of, co this is kosher salt. I don't add too much to the cabbage because it, um, I don't know. I usually don't add a lot of salt and pepper to my vegetables. I just do a little bit. It's just like a tiny pinch. Big enough to fit like the top of my finger right there. All right, so now we've got to turn our chicken. So with this recipe, basically, usually I would cook the chicken all the way through and then serve it separately. But with this recipe, um, the way I do it is I cook the chicken most of the way, right? And then I just put the sauce in there with the chicken. So it's like a, it kind of gets all that flavor in there. So we're just going to cook this maybe one or two more minutes. And then we're going to add our, um, our sauce. And I forgot to put the pudding in the, I'll make the pudding at the end. Let me see if I can grab a bowl. Hold on one sec. All right, got my bowl and my vegetables, it's just a Pyrex bowl. Um, I've had those for 20 years, probably. And my mom bought them for me when I got my first apartment when I was like, I might have only been 20 even. Anyways, I can smell the rice cooking. Our rice cooker is also probably 30, 30 years old. It's almost time to get another one, but they're expensive, so we haven't bought a new one yet. Um, I know most rice cookers are not expensive, but the one we have is from Japan, I think. I don't know, my mother-in-law bought it a long time ago, but we only cook two cups of rice at a time, even though we eat quite a bit of rice. Um, we'll just make it every day or two, because we don't really like it when it gets all yucky, you know, when it gets all dry. Okay. All right, so this chicken is pretty well, like it's it's not browned very well. I didn't do a good job of browning it, but um, I think it'll be okay for, I feel like this burner's not up high enough. It'll be okay. Um, um, I need to make this pudding. Yes, I do. Hmm. I'll have to do that after the chicken's cooked. Alright, so this chicken is pretty cooked. It's not, ooh, I just set that on the counter. See, I'm a little distracted. 
it's not all the way cooked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, so it doesn't get overcooked because you don't want it to get tough. It's like two thirds of the way cooked, I would say, the big parts. Like if I took a thermometer, let's see. I should always have a meat thermometer. So some of the ones I put in earlier are, yeah, see they're at a 10, 108, 109. This one's at 117, 115. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash my thermometer. I'm gonna put this cream of mushroom in there. And then I'm gonna add some thyme, and I'm gonna add one container, one of these containers of milk to make my sauce. So my soup, it'll melt down, don't worry. My milk, actually, I'm gonna do a little bit less. I think it's supposed to be one cup, so let's see, where are we? It's like two thirds, and we'll see. All right, and then I'm gonna add some thyme to that. Normally I would be already washing my stuff, but um, since we are filming it, I'll just have to wash it at the end. Like I don't like leaving dishes. I don't know much. Let's say it's probably this much. Where are you? This much? I don't know. So with time, you just kind of reverse, reverse it off the, oh, that one's going to go in. You reverse it like this. Or you can just stick it in there and then pull the sticks out when you're done. Which I may end up doing because this stuff is not coming off very well. I guess I could have gotten, yeah, I'm just going to stick these in there. Oh. Some of the, there we go, see? It's like a little too fresh, it won't come off. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so you just have to remember if you don't, like if you do it this way and you put some of the sticks in there that you gotta, okay, so see how my milk is like, oh, it smells so good, oh my gosh. I wish you guys could smell this. Smells really good. Wow. It's definitely a smell that I remember from when my oldest daughter was little. And this way you can also get a lot of the juice. I mean, you probably could have just, you could take, cook the chicken all the way and then put the sauce in and just pour it over, but I like having the sauce like kind of mingle with the chicken, like kind of absorb into it while it's cooking, so I always do it this way. Right. It smells really good. I'm probably burning my vegetables because I'm talking too much. Mm, not quite. I'm definitely burning, or cooking down. I don't know if you remember when I did the cabbage, I kind of blackened it a little bit with my quesadilla video. I'm not going to do that here because, I don't know, the peppers, I don't know. I'm just going to cook it. It looks about good. I don't like my peppers super cooked. I like them like a little bit crunchy. So, let's see if my daughter comes home with the dog in between. I may add some more time to this. Oop, there goes my rice cooker. I don't know if you heard that. Okay, so you want to make sure that your your uh, sauce doesn't burn is one thing you want to make sure you do. Another thing is you can scrape the bottom. Remember how the chicken stuck to the bottom before? You can scrape it and get the little chickeny bits off and then that's good in the sauce. All right, so I'm going to turn this down to low. I'm going to add some more time to it. Smells good, but I feel like some of the time is getting lost in there because there's so much milk and stuff. So I'm gonna add some more. All 
we do have some time out in the garden, but it's, it's literally teeny tiny right now, so it's definitely not enough to, um, like, I, this would be the whole plant, I'm sure. It grows really slowly, so I'm going to add some more thyme plants, I think, this year. I don't know, we really like thyme. And if this dish is successful, then I'm definitely, definitely going to add it. Alright, I think these vegetables are done. Um, this, I don't know why this is still here. Ooh, we're going to toss that, toss it into the sink. Turn off our burner. And then pour these into our bowl. My son will not eat this. He gets a bowl of microwaved frozen peas because that's the only vegetable he is eating right now. Alright, gotta remember this burner's hot. Just simmer this for a little bit. Let the sauce kind of coalesce. This would probably be better if my chicken had browned, but you know what? I don't, it's fine. It'll still taste good. It just doesn't look as pleasing. Maybe even if I cut the chicken up into little chunks and then browned it. Oh, maybe next time I'll try that. I am down to three cream of mushroom soups and to me that is a little bit not enough cream of mushroom soup. Um, we eat maybe one or two cans a month. Whoop. All right, Mr. Thermometer. Open there. Um, so, so chicken needs to be at 165. These are hovering around 140. I am not one of those people that can naturally tell <laughs> when chicken is done. I'm gonna have to wash this towel. Um, so <laughs> I always use a thermometer. My husband can tell. He doesn't use a thermometer. And he would actually probably tell me this is done, but I like my chicken cooked, especially if I'm gonna put it in the fridge and not eat it right away. So we're gonna let this cook. Um, I wanted to also make pudding, which is not hard. You just stick it in the, you just need a bowl. Hmm. All right, I took that opportunity to clean up my space a little bit. So the chicken is still kind of simmering. I need two cups of milk in here. I'm just supposed to whisk it, but I do not. I whisk. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to wash the whisks. I'm gonna use a fork, which is what people used to use. Sometimes I'll put it in containers, but um, see, this milk is now down to about here. Yeah, down to about here. So we've used up most of this milk just tonight. Just making this pudding. This is cheesecake flavor, I think. I don't know, the kids picked it out. And this pudding will last a few days. Um, I usually use small, sometimes I'll put it in these lovely jars. These are like flan jars from, you know, Costco used to have in the holidays. They had these little flan things and I saved, oops, see I'm making a big mess today. I saved the jars and I um, I let them have juice in that and it's like a good portion control because they just get one or two if I'm feeling generous. I will give them two of those. All right. So I go through a lot of kitchen towels. I just wipe this counter off. Now I'm going to put this pudding in the fridge. I washed off my... Uh, thermometer so I washed everything off so we're getting close to 165 see 164 165 160 Let's see 160 so I'm just gonna um, put them here I'm gonna leave it for a second. I have to call the kids up from dinner from downstairs. I have to come out to wash their hands and I just have to set the table. So by the time I'm done with that, this chicken will be fine. It'll be up to 165 and we'll be able to eat it. So I will do a short video of the plate when I'm done. But for now, feel free to like and subscribe. This is a gluten-free chicken thyme, I guess chicken and thyme cream sauce with rice and vegetables. So have a great day.
All right, let's see if I can plate this nicely while filming. And hopefully my kids do not come upstairs and be loud. So I don't, what do you think? You think I can do it? Here comes everybody, I can hear them. So a little bit of rice. And then I'm going to have two of these pieces of chicken. It's about four ounces of chicken. And then some veggies. So there we go. Some not so nicely plated dinner. Thank you for watching our thyme cream, creamy chicken thyme recipe. I still haven't found a good name for it. Um, and then this is the screenshot of the pudding that we made, the cheesecake pudding with some strawberries in it for dessert. It was delicious. Um, the kids really like this pudding and I probably will end up having to get more of it. So please like and subscribe and comment on ways that you have made recipes. If you've made any chicken recipes lately that you like that are also gluten-free and nut-free. Um, and then I'll post some links in the uh, comments or in the description of the video for some of the um, like the pans we used, I think, and maybe the knives too. We'll see. But thank you for watching and have a great day.